Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Old Sarge Collects. This is it. This is the final episode where I'm going to share biographies of the uh, 1934 to 1936 Diamond Stars cards. And uh, these are my last three cards that I'm going to share with you. Um, and then later in this video, I'm going to also share with you the extended set, or rather the duplicates that they have in the set. So the the actual set ends at 96, card number 96. And then after 96, cards number 97 through 108 are all duplicates. So I'll get into those. But first, let me introduce you to these three players. These um, are the last three cards that I have to share with you and the last three bios. So the first card I'm going to share and, and talk about is Robert Rolf. Um, let's learn a little bit about him. So he was born in 1908 in Pinnacook, New Hampshire. He made his major league debut in 1931 as a third baseman for the New York Yankees. Red was an Ivy Leaguer. He graduated from Dartmouth College. He played 10 major league seasons, all with the Yankees. He was a four-time All-Star and a five-time World Series champion. After the 1942 season, Rolf retired from baseball and became a coach for Yale University. After his four years at Yale, he coached the Toronto Huskies, before returning to the Yankees as a coach. In 1947, Rolf joined the Detroit Tigers organization and became the Tiger manager after the 1948 season. Rolf held the Tigers manager position until 1952. He then returned to Dartmouth as the athletic director for the next 12 years. Robert Rolf died in 1969 at the age of 60. So let's take a look at the card and... Um, start with the back. So the back of this card is a green back and it's a uh, 1935 card because it gives the stats for 1934. Now the back of the card, there's a fielding tip on it and it says major league fielders watch closely to see the spot where a pitch is about to cross the plate and get a leaning start to that side where the ball could be hit. And then the front of the card I like this front of the card. Um, I like, you know, red in his uh, Yankees uniform. I think that's really cool with the, the New York written right there across his chest. And he's got his Yankees cap on. I really like seeing that that uh, umpire right there. And then you've got an outfielder out there. Um, so another interesting thing, if you if you focus closely on this card, you'll see that the red is actually silhouettes of buildings. And then you've got a smokestack here with some smoke coming from it. And what I like about that is that the smoke goes right between his name, Robert and Rolf. So just an interesting, um, you know, interesting take on that. So that is what I like about that card, card number 29, Robert Rolf or Red Rolf. The next player is going to be Jimmy Fox. Now, this was the last card I had to pick up in the entire set. So, um, you know, I couldn't finish this episode or this series without picking up that card. And so I'm really happy to have that. Uh, I got a great copy of it, a really well-centered copy of it. So, And let's learn a little bit about Jimmy Fox. I'm sure a lot of this you probably already know, but uh, he was nicknamed Double X or The Beast. He was born in 1907 in Sudlerville, Maryland. He made his major league debut in 1925 as a catcher for the Philadelphia Athletics. Fox was a tremendous power hitter and is considered one of the greatest hitters in baseball history. In 1927, Fox transitioned to first base, but in future years, he would cameo behind the plate as a catcher, as seen in this 1935 card. Fox played for the Athletics from 1925 to 1935. During his time with the Athletics, he was a three-time All-Star, an AL MVP two times, a Triple Crown winner, a three-time AL home run leader, an AL batting champ, and a two-time AL RBI leader, and was a World Series champion twice. And his uh, uh, accomplishments go even further than that. That's just when he was with the Athletics. So Fox was the only true contender to beat uh, to beat out Babe Ruth's 60 home run record. And in 1932, he almost did it. He uh, hit 60 home runs, 
but two were not counted because games were rained out, erasing them from the official batting records. Now, in 1936, Fox was traded to the Boston Red Sox. While with the Red Sox, Fox set many franchise records, some of which hold today. He was also an all-star six times, an uh, American League MVP, an AL batting champ, an AL home run leader, and an AL RBI leader. Now, due to his health problems, Fox's stamina as a power hitter had started to decline, even though he was still an MVP contender for the remainder of his career. In 1942, Fox was traded to the Chicago Cubs. He split time between first base and pinch hitting duties. His health had uh, declined so much that he sat out for the 1943 season and only played in 14 games in 1944. Fox joined the Phillies in 1945 and would retire by the end of the season. He really didn't play that many uh, games. Fox retired with a 325 batting average. 2,646 hits, and 534 uh, home runs. So he was really close to hitting that 3,000 hit record. And then um, he was the second member of the 500 home run club behind Babe Ruth. Jimmy Fox was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1951. In his post-playing career, Jimmy worked as a minor league manager and coach He was the manager of the Fort Wayne Daisies of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. The character of Jimmy Dugan in the 1992 movie A League of Their Own was loosely based on Fox. And Fox died in 1967 in Miami, Florida. Let's go ahead and talk about the card. So the back is a green back. It's from 1935 and it gives the stats for 1934. Uh, The... The back of the card talks about Fox's upbringing and calls him a rare find about which managers dream. The card says that Fox is counted as the most likely man in the game to break the Babe's home run record. Now, the front of the card is a a glorious looking card. It's got very well centering. Um, It's got, you know, a great surface on it, if you can tell. Uh, great coloring on it. I don't believe it's faded at all. And uh, what I really like about it, though, is that it shows him in a catcher's uniform, which was rarely seen on cardboard because uh, early on in his career, he was actually switched over to being first baseman. So the fact that he only filled in as catcher a, a handful of times in 1935, and this set was able to pick up that and and display that on a card is really um, really interesting for me. So I really enjoy that. And the, uh, the artistic detail of this card is really nice as well. So that is Jimmy Fox. And now we're going to talk about the last card in the set, in my opinion, the last card in the set. So if you're a completionist, then you know that the, card, the set goes all the way to 108, and you'd be inclined to collect the entire set. However, I'm not so much of a completionist, and so card number 96 to me is the final set, the final card. Let's learn about Lou Riggs. Card number 96, Lou Riggs. He was born in 1910 in Mabane, North Carolina. He made his major league debut in 1934 as a third baseman for the St. Louis Cardinals. Riggs played in the major leagues for 10 seasons. He played for the St. Louis Cardinals in only the 1934 season. Then he was traded to the Cincinnati Reds and he played for the team from 1935 to 1940. While with the Reds, he was selected to play in the 1936 All-Star Game. In 1940, uh, Riggs and the Cincinnati Reds were World Series champions. In 1941, Lou was traded to the Brooklyn Dodgers, where he played until 1942. Um, He lost three years due to his military service. He served in the Army Air Corps during World War II, so Lou, thank you for your service. And in 1946, he played his final season with the Dodgers before quitting professional baseball altogether. Lou Riggs died at the age of 65 in 1975. So uh, let's talk about the back of the card first. It's a blue back. It's a 1936 card, and it gives the stats for 1935. 
And um, it credits Riggs, the, the verbiage on the back, credits Riggs as one of the outstanding figures in Cincinnati's so-called freshman team and uh, that it helped and that he helped the Reds to lift into sixth place higher than the club has been since 1927. Now the back, I'm sorry, the front of the card is just amazing. It's, it's very nice. I love the, the artistic detail of this card. Um, so a couple of things I like about it. I like this. I like his socks, those striped red socks. Um, you know, it really kind of brings home the red legs. Um, then I also like the detail in this player over here who's sliding into third base, kicking up a lot of dust. And then in the background, you've got an umpire running in just to make sure that, you know, whether Lou tagged out this base runner or not. So just a, paints just a really cool action image, um, you know, and along with some of those Art Deco designs in the background, just really lovely image. So that's what I love about this Lou Riggs card, which is card number 96, the final card in the set, in my opinion. All right, now hang tight for a second, and I'm going to talk to you about the extended set or the duplicates in the set. So hold on just a second. Okay, guys, so uh, back to the extended set, or the or what I call the duplicates in the set, and uh, this is cards 97 through 108. Now, I only have one card in the extended set, and I'll share that with you in a minute, but let's go ahead and talk about who's in the extended set. So the first player in the extended set at card number 97 is going to be... Al Lopez, and uh, his normal card number is card number 28, and in, like I said, in the extended set, he's going to be card number 97. The next player is going to be Schoolboy Row. Schoolboy Row is card number 98 in the extended set, and his uh, card number in the main set is 33. And then the next player is Pi Trainer, a Hall of Famer. And Pi Trainer is card number 99 in the extended set, but in the regular set, he's card number 27. And the next player is going to be Earl Avril. He's card number. 100 in the extended set and in the main set he's card number 35 and at card number 101 is Dick Bartell and in the regular set Dick Bartell is card number 15 by the way all of these cards look identical on the front and the verbiage on the back is the exact same as well card number 102 is Van Mungo, and he is at card number 19 in the regular set. All right. Now, down to the last six cards in the set. At card number 103 is Bill Dickey. And he is uh, card number 11 in the regular set. Another Hall of Famer. So going back to Red Rolf, this was the only card from the extended set that I have, which is card number 104. And then, as I've shown you earlier, he's card number 29 in the regular set. Notice that the images on the front are exactly identical. And also the image or the verbiage on the back is the exact same. The only difference you're going to see is a green back and a blue back. All the cards in the later part of the set are all blue back. And then in the earlier set, they're all green back. So that's really the only difference you're going to see between the regular uh, set and the extended set. And the next card is card number 105, and that's the schnoz himself, Ernie Lombardi. 
and he normally comes in at card number 36 in the set. And then we have Red Lucas, who would be card number 106, but he's also card number 46 in the regular set. And then we have Stanley Hack at card number 107, and Stanley Hack is normally card number 34 in the set. And then the last card, which is I, I have, but it's currently at SGC, the last card is of uh, Walter Berger, or Wally Berger, and he's card number 108, and he normally is card number 25 in the, uh, in the regular set. So anyway, that is uh, all the cards in the Diamond Star set. I hope you've enjoyed this series, learning about each player, and uh, stay tuned for a few more episodes that I'm going to do, really just to show you, um, you know, team sets. I'm going to do a video of the entire set, all in one video, and um, I'm going to do some special series where, or special videos where I'm going to show cards with, with umpires and things like that. So, for example... These two cards here both have umpires in them. And and I'm just gonna pick some cards at random that, that, that have, you know, common things, common themes uh, rather, like those, or I might pull all the the catcher's cards out of the set and, and just show you all those. Other than that, that completes my series on the 1934 to 1936 Diamond Star set. Anyway, thank you for watching, take care, keep hunting the good stuff, and talk to you soon.